Welcome to the Go Room Podcast with your hosts, Sophia Garcia and Tassi Narisha. Tune in as we interview those affected by childhood cancer, gather their perspectives, and help others find comfort in their expertise. Today, we'll be discussing how cancer has impacted athletes and cancer sport role models. So I thought that this topic was important to talk about because a lot of times I think we th- we talk about cancer generally on the podcast and cancer survivors generally, but we've never gotten into specifics um, and like more specifically like cancer sport role models. And I think role models in general are just important to talk about because a lot of times people don't associate um, like cancer and being an athlete with something that like will work together because obviously cancer takes like a very big toll on the body. So I think it's important to talk about how athletes have overcome cancer and also to honor those that have not been able to continue their athletic careers because of cancer, because that doesn't mean they're any less of a person. I think it's also interesting to see how cancer affects people in different um like career paths, especially those that are like athletic. Um, And I think also what I found interesting was the difference between people that are athletes that are coming over, overcoming cancer um, versus people that are um, the general public, the general population who are overcoming cancer. And so I found um, like four uh, uh, phases in order to overcome cancer. So phase one, I found was recovery. And this initial phase focuses on recovery from cancer treatment and rebuilding strength and addressing any side effects. Um, Physical therapy and targeted exercises may be prescribed to restore range of motion, um, improve muscular strength and address any functional limitations. Um, This is more focused on um, optimizing the athlete's physical condition for more intense training after cancer treatment. And then phase two is um, conditioning and fitness development. And this is where they focus on their overall f- physical fitness and conditioning. Um, and this includes like a lot of exercises and resistant training. And then um, during the these workouts, they gradually increase to improve the athlete's stamina, strength, and overall fitness levels. And then um, during phase three, there are sport training and this is specifically for the type of sport that they're doing and it drills into their training program um, and they work on regaining sport specific skills and techniques and movements required for their particular sport and then phase four is when they actually return to competitions and they demonstrate readiness um, that they can be able to um, be in comp- competitive activities once again they start participating in practice session so this is more uh, generally like after their cancer treatment. So did you find like anything while during their cancer treatment, what they do? Um, I focus more on like finding specific cancer role models, but just in general, I feel like it's interesting that there are a lot of phases. Like I never thought about the specifics of it, um, especially because like, I feel like to work out those phases, you have to talk very closely with like medical professionals and like your team, your cancer team, like at the hospital you're at. Um, I think that just shows like why it's important to like maintain contact frequently with the cancer care team that you're working with and also to just use the resources you have um, like within hospitals um, because I feel like the phases I didn't think about before but that's something that makes a lot of sense and if it can optimize someone's ability to come back after battling cancer I think that's really important. Are there any specific role models that you found that yeah. stood out to you? Yeah. Um, so I found one that was known as Billy Mayfair and he was a American or he is an American professional golfer. Um, he had a very impressive career. Um, and like at one point I don't, I didn't know who this person was at first, but apparently, um, he had defeated Tiger Woods in his prime, um, which is a very popular golf player, what I didn't know about before, but, um, during like a very important time in his career, He was diagnosed with testicle cancer and um, he had to undergo surgery very early after that. And only two weeks later, he played in a PGA tournament and um, now he still plays and is cancer free. So I thought like the story was very impressive because like two weeks after going through surgery to become cancer free, he was back like on like playing again. And I found that that it was really impressive and also just shows like the range of how there are so many different cancers and how they affect people in such different ways. Because with a lot of other cancers, that may not have been possible. Um, I think it also just it just emphasizes the importance of like getting cancer care early because he because he like got care like three days after he was diagnosed. He was able to play only two weeks later. Um, And also, I think it just shows how you're able to overcome cancer because 
like even after that and the toll it did take on his career um he still plays now after being cancer free um another person i found that i feel like is very well known for us is lance armstrong and um he used to cycle and he had um cancer that eventually spread to his lungs and brain in 1996 and then he went through surgery and chemotherapy um but then he was able to make remarkable recovery and then he returned to professional cycling and then he went um to break seven um of record breaking seven consecutive times like the prestigious tour de france and i think that's pretty um interesting because it kind of shows how uh athletes they don't take cancer as sort of like um something that completely destroys their career it's um they're able to overcome it and then they're able to fight back cancer and then go back to their career and um be successful athletes and um one thing that i found interesting was that athletes they typically have like a higher level of fit of this physical fitness and conditioning compared to the general population. And so this kind of plays a role in their ability to tolerate and recover from cancer treatments. However, that doesn't mean that cancer treatments don't take a toll on the athlete's body. Um, they still experience like physical effects, side effects. And so um, the conditioning process for athletes may be more intense because of their unique physical needs and um, for them to be able to gain their pre-cancer level performance. Um, and also return to sports is obviously like a significant goal for athletes compared to like the general public. Um, and they have this strong desire and motivation to resume their athletic careers and compete um, like previously. Um, but this involves a structured plan from their medical team um, that considers the demands of their sport and the potential risks and uh, physical readiness. And so close collaboration between medical professionals, coaches, and trainers are essential. And I, it kind of um, is parallel to um, when we talked about how uh, cancer patients, um, they have to have uh, close communication with their medical team and they have to have communication with their families. And then athletes, they also have this um, mental mindset where they have to maintain a competitive mindset when they're facing challenges or they're setting goals. Um, and this mental resilience can actually help them um, confront and overcome cancer. Um, so they may draw upon their sports background to stay focused, motivated, and disciplined throughout their cancer journey. So um, their return to sport can be like a powerful motivating factor. And I think that provides a unique perspective or determination um, to overcome cancer, especially um, because patients, as we um, discussed before, they uh, suffer from anxiety, depression a lot of times. And I feel like um, adapting to this mental mindset can be useful and helpful, just like athletes do. And also what I found out was that athletes, they have like a broader support system compared to the general public. Um, teammates, coaches, and fans can provide an additional motivation and encouragement during the cancer journey. And it kind of shows how um, this need for like a support system is really crucial in order to um, confront cancer. And um, what I figured out that they may, the sports community may rally around an athlete and um, they may do this through fundraising, awareness campaigns, or just gestures of solidarity. And um, they may also have specialized sports uh, medicine professionals who understand the unique challenges of cancer recovery uh, for an athlete compared to a general population. And like we're talking about right now, athletes, they kind of serve as like a role model and source of inspiration for others um, because they have a public platform. Um, it helps raise awareness about cancer and inspire others facing similar challenges. And then they advocate for cancer research and support, especially because childhood cancer gets like about 4% of the government's funding. So I think that's kind of crucial being able to raise enough cancer awareness um, to contribute to the cancer research. Um, but also another thing is that there's this competitive environment that athletes have, and this can, um, put like an emotional pressure and psychological pressure. 
um, because they're always pressured to be able to return back to their team or their sport. And so it's important to create like a supportive understanding environment within the athletic community um, to help them understand that their health is more important than their career or um, sports. Yeah, I think all the things that you brought up really important. One thing that stood out was the thing you brought up about, uh, about Lance Armstrong, um, because a lot of the research I did, I found that m many of the athletes that had become cancer role models were ended up working with the Livestrong Foundation, which is a nonprofit that supports people affected by cancer. And it was established by Lance Armstrong after his cancer diagnosis. Um, like one athlete specifically that I found was Eric Shantu or Shanto. And he was an American swimmer that competed in the 2012 um, United States like, Olympic team for swimming. Um, and the thing was that before um, his cancer diagnosis, he had competed in 2008 um, and he had gotten very close to competing. But the one week before the Olympics, he was diagnosed with cancer. Um, and while he can, while he still did compete and like, even though it risked his cancer worsening, um, he after being cancer free he competed again in the 2012 olympics and he ended up winning a gold medal then and i think it just shows how he was able to overcome it and then also not only that like i mentioned he became involved with live strong foundation so i think it's just all connecting it it's showing like how you said how important it is that people advocate for cancer awareness especially with more specific people like athletes um where a lot of times it's like people don't kind of consider that people can come back from cancer and still be strong or stronger athletes. Um, and just like the same thing with the phases that you were saying before, like, I think it just puts an emphasis on how it is possible for people to overcome cancer and to move on to bigger and better things. But a lot of times people like don't see that. And I think a big part of it is like the mental thing that you said, where a lot of people have the mental barrier and they don't like, they can't see the positive in it. Um, which obviously it is hard to see the positive in it when a lot of times cancer treatment especially is not the most positive thing but I think that's why it's important to have these role models because you can use them as an inspiration and also for a lot of people that maybe kids that are because we are mainly focused on kids with cancer because cancer gets first kids that may be athletes and may be going through cancer and may not want it to be the end for them I think that these role models can kind of provide that support and seeing that a lot of people can overcome it and a lot of people have overcome it and gotten even stronger through it. Um, and then just another person that I found was John Lester, which he's a current Red Sox, Red Sox starting pitcher. Um, and like during the prime of his career, he ended up getting diagnosed with cancer um, and he is now cancer free. And then he moved on from then to become one of the best pitchers in the American league. Um, and after that, he ended up joining the Livestrong Foundation to help raise cancer awareness. Um, and he also, the Livestrong Foundation also hosts things like baseball camps. And John Lester was one of the hosts for this baseball camp in 2012. Um, and this camp and also the proceeds coming from his own wine label that he's released went to cancer research, um, two different organizations, one known as Never Quit, which raises funds for pediatric, pediatric cancer research, and then also the Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle, which is where he was treated. And they also obviously work with cancer patients and on cancer research. So from what I'm noticing is sort of like a community that kind of builds from um, these athletes that do go through cancer and they kind of take their experiences to be able to um, form stories and form um, methods of support, whether it's through um, like fundraising, like, mm -hmm you explained right now through the Armstrong um, organization. Um, but also what I've noticed is that um, there are some limitations or like um, like specific concerns um, regarding like athletes that go through cancer. Um, because I feel like we talked about how athletes they tend to have that strong mental mindset um, that the general um, public um, may not have. But also athletes, they have this limited um, time frame to recover and resume their careers, um, as we said, due to, due to their competitive nature um, of their sport. And so it's, it's kind of hard balancing cancer treatment and rehabilitation and training for um, athletes who have like um, professional or competitive obligations. Um, and so a lot of times these, 
these recovery processes may um, be optimized or um, speeded up to allow for a timely return to competition. And also a lot of times um, uh, what's not talked about is that they may lose like an integral part of their identity um, because sports for them is not just like an activity, it's a part of their identity. And so being able to overcome that uh, potential loss or altercation of their um, athletic identity a identity can be challenging. So it's important to have like additional support to address the athlete's sense of self and identity. And a lot of times um, people expect um, athletes to be able to return to their previous levels of performance, which can um, like leave a um, psychological or mental um, impact on them because they're expected to have um, higher performance. They have like performance expectations placed on them. And so that's why it's important, as I said, to have like an additional support team for that. Um, and also a lot of times athletes, they face um, like physical um, abilities, like changes in physical abilities, like loss of muscle mass or decreased stamina or uh, alternative performance levels. And so they have to have close communication with their medical team to be able to address those problems. Yeah, I think that's all like all what you said is really important um I think like one big thing that we like keep mentioning is just how important like cancer care teams and talking to professionals is um because like there's also like with the mental aspect um we've talked about it before with how some cancer hospital or soon as hospitals um that work with cancer care teams have like medical professionals that are like therapists and stuff that work within the cancer team and I think that could help a lot in the situation where it, like can affect people mentally especially because I think I at least I'm mainly talking about like pro athletes but there's a lot of careers like in high school athletes and also college athletes where there's like only a certain amount of years they can compete if they don't go pro and I think that that's also an important thing to think about because cancer like you said that um a lot of times like treatment can be more like timely if they're considering their career um but with like college athletes and other I think it depends on the type of cancer in those cases um, and then like for some athletes, it may not be that timely for them to be able to continue their careers like as much as they want to and also be treated for cancer. So I think just thinking about like all the different circumstances is really important in these cases too. Yeah. And also players, they tend to adapt like a healthy lifestyle choices after um, going through cancer, which is really important. They have like a balanced diet um, rich in nutrients and they stay hydrated and they get like a sufficient amount of rest and sleep and they engage in regular exercises. Um, also the mental as aspect of it, they, they're able to manage stress and um, they're able to go to their medical appointments. And I think that stands sort of as like an inspiration for um, the general public um, and promoting like overall, uh, overall wellness um, and the importance of physical and emotional healing, especially after going through cancer and how a healthy lifestyle is essential for not just athletes, but like anyone, um, especially those going through cancer and being able to optimize their physical um, condition and reducing the risk of cancer reoccurring. And like we said before, um, uh, many of these players who have overcome cancer, they become advocates for cancer awareness. And I think that's really important, especially because um, a lot of times cancer is not talked about. And I feel like because um, a lot of these athletes have public platforms or social media platforms, they're able to spread awareness about it much easier, especially because society, um, our society um, is on the internet constantly. And um, we're constantly consuming social media on a daily basis. And I feel like it's really important to have these role models who are able to advocate for um, cancer and other diseases. Yeah, and just like with using their platforms, um, like one example, another example I found was um, Mario Lumix. And he was, um, or he is a like National Hockey League player. Um, and at one point having cancer made him get sidelined for two months. Um, but after overcoming cancer, he created his own foundation known as the Mario Lumix Foundation, and it helps fund medical projects. And it also 
um works with like live strong which is like the biggest thing a lot of all the like all the athletes i found i'm pretty sure worked with live strong which is lance armstrong's foundation and i think that not only advocating like by their by themselves but also joining in an organization like life strong where so many other athletes are connected through it and it's not only for athletes it's just general to support um cancer patients i think it's really important that they all have come together because it just makes it gives it more like power and can create more awareness um and this person also created athletes for hope with lance armstrong who started the life strong foundation and this is just another foundation, um, but it's more for like athletes, whereas Life Strong is more like general, but which is started by Lance Armstrong, who was an athlete. Um, and then I think that those different organizations, like they are both very important because while one just has more general awareness, the other one has like it's more geared towards like athletes, which I think is it's important to um have both existing because I think having a larger one obviously creates more awareness, but the more specific one, I think it's important because you can get more like a specific support. Um, and it also is just like the, that foundation athletes for hope inspires non-athletes too. So I think it's like important that all these different organizations exist and it just kind of shows the power of like awareness and trying to like create new ath- new outlets of support for people. Yeah, and I also found like another example. It was like um a swimmer, a Dutch long distance swimmer. Um, their name was Martin, and he uh went on to win numerous medals and completed actually um a two hundred kilometer charity swim to raise funds for cancer research after he was diagnosed with leukemia in two thousand one. Um, and he did this after receiving treatment that included chemotherapy and stem cell transplant. Um. And also um, Scott Hamilton, and he was um, a figure skater, an Olympic figure skater that was diagnosed with cancer in 1997. And then he underwent surgery and then he received treatment, including chemotherapy. And then he was able to successfully beat the disease. And so he was able to return to skating. And he also became a strong advocate for cancer research and survivorship. And I think um, another interesting one was um, um uh, Mark I, I think we may have talked about him but he was like an American football a uh, former NFL linebacker and um what I think was interesting that he was able to return to football and then play for the Boston College Eagles before signing with the New York Giants and the NFL which is like a really huge accomplishment for him especially even um going through cancer and like the physical and mental aspect of it so it just kind of shows how um cancer uh doesn't have to stop you from doing what you love or like continuing your career um if you go through um the necessary treatment and um you're able to uh, have a close connection with your medical team and medical professionals you'll be able to get back on track and um cancer is not going to stop you from achieving a lot of things just like all these athletes have yeah i think we talked about like a lot of different athletes that are like professional athletes that have gone through cancer and how their advocacy is important so I guess like my question would be like why do you think role models in general are important because I feel like all these people can serve as role models um and I think that role models play a very big piece in like supporting and helping people I guess I can like say why I think they're important um I feel like it's just important especially for kids with cancer because a lot of times they don't have as much representation like in the media um, so these role models can be like a source of inspiration and, and support. And they also create like a model for like, for if kids maybe aspire to be these people, they create a model for like what they want to be and something they can look forward to and just kind of to motivate them. Um, and yeah, I think that's important. Yeah. And I feel like a lot, like, as you said, a lot of times these children, they don't get the representation that they need. Um, and I feel like um, it's really helpful for them to be able to see these people on public platforms and social media platforms advocating for cancer and how they're continuing their career and they're not letting cancer stop them. And I feel like that's so beneficial to children, especially um, those that don't have as much support as maybe like athletes do from the general public. And um, it kind of helps um, aid them along their cancer journey and kind of shows how just because they've gotten cancer as a child does not mean 
um, that they won't be able to go do their dream career in the future, especially um, if that child chooses to go on an athletic um, career pathway. And I feel like it serves as sort of like an inspiration for many people. Yeah, I agree. And I also think like what with what you said, how like kind of having cancer does not mean the end to someone's like athletic career forever. I think that's really important because I think we've talked about misconceptions a lot. And I feel like that's a big misconception, at least like I think, or I don't know if it's like a certain misconception, but I think it could be one because a lot of times like people see how cancer takes a toll on the body. You may not think that an athlete can come back from that and still compete and become a stronger athlete like have we like with many of the athletes that we talked about today. Um, so I think that's important just to kind of spread stories and awareness of people that are cancer sport role models because they not only provide a sense of support and awareness, um, but also they kind of open people's eyes to like what people are capable of. Just because someone has cancer does not mean their life is over, does not mean their career is over, does not mean like necessarily anything. So yeah, I just think that's important. And I think it's also interesting how a lot of these athletes, they take their cancer journey to not um, not only like just grow strong from that, but also help others going through cancer, like their cancer research and advocating for cancer awareness. And I feel like that serves as sort of like an inspiration um, for the younger generation and being able to advocate for cancer research, not just forgetting, not not just forgetting um, about cancer right after, but more like helping others um, uh, battle cancer and also raising awareness about it to combat like the misconceptions that the general public may have about cancer. Yeah and I think it just kind of shows that a lot of times th there needs to be more, more outlets for like support for people like going back to our, just our first episode where we talked to a cancer survivor that told us how they didn't have like any support practically mentally and throughout their um, cancer like treatment and diagnosis um, and I think that there's just a lot of outlets for support, like even outside of your cancer care team, even outside of hospitals, like we're finding it through people that have experienced it themselves, just their stories, like them sharing it online through different organizations. So I think it just shows that there's like a lot of support out there. You just have to be like willing to look for it. Um, and obviously going through cancer is a very like hard thing. So I think that looking for those support outlets can be a really crucial thing for a lot of people. Um, and then I guess we'll just move on to the promo. So if you or someone you know are looking to support childhood cancer patients and help them to experience better childhood but are stuck on how, Cancer Kids First may be the answer for you. Cancer Kids First is a nonprofit organization started by high schooler Olivia Zhang that aims to improve the childhoods of cancer patients. Through volunteer work, donations, fundraising, and the creation of this podcast, those working with Cancer Kids First work to further its mission. If you're interested, go to www.cancerkidsfirst.org slash get dash involved to get involved. Another way to support the mission of Cancer Kids First is to listen to this podcast and follow us on our Instagram and TikTok at The Gold Room Podcast and Twitter at TGR underscore on air. You can also get in touch with us through our email, the Gold Room Podcast at gmail.com. Episodes will be airing two times a month. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of The Gold Room Podcast. If you have any ideas for or want to be involved with future episodes, make sure to check out our link in our Instagram bio. Have a nice day and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.